All right, let's review some practice questions um, in relation to the anatomy and diagnostic content within the respiratory system. As always with all of our practice question videos, I do ask that you pause the video after we originally uh, go over the question and the answer options. That way you can come to the correct answer independently and then you can certainly resume the video so that we can go over the rationales together. All right, this is a classic multiple choice style question, which will test your knowledge of physiological integrity and health promotion and maintenance. A 52 year old male patient is post-operative from a left hip replacement three weeks ago um, and develops a cough and shortness of breath on exertion. Due to the patient's risk factors, the physician decides to perform a pulmonary angiogram for further assessment. The nurse is educating the patient on the procedure and expectations. Which of the following would the nurse um, include in the patient teaching? So we have a patient who is three weeks post-op from a hip replacement. He has a cough and shortness of breath. The physician has ordered a pulmonary angiogram. What do we know about a pulmonary angiogram and which of these statements are true? All right, so the uh, nurse would include in the patient teaching that the patient may feel the urge to cough, may have some flushing or a salty taste following the injection of the dye. So a patient undergoing a pulmonary angiogram always needs to be assessed for allergies to iodine, seafood, or radioplaque dyes. The patient needs to maintain an NPO status prior to the procedure. Uh, the patient should also be instructed that they may have the urge to cough, have flushing, nausea, or a salty taste following the injection of the dye. Post-procedure, the peripheral uh, neurovascular status of the affected extremity uh, needs to be monitored very closely, with the patient instructed to report any numbness or tingling, which could be a sign of circulatory impairment. Um, affected, or you want to avoid blood pressure in the affected extremity post-procedure for at least 24 hours. All right, this is a highlight in text style question, which will test your knowledge of physiological integrity. A 32-year-old female patient presents to the emergency department with complaints of right calf pain, primarily when walking. The patient is currently four weeks postpartum and has a past medical history of obesity, hypertension, and elevated triglyceride levels. Upon physical, physical assessment, the nurse notes mild swelling to the right lower leg. Vital signs and lab results are as follows. So the patient's heart rate is 102, BP is 138 over 84, temp is 98.9, creatinine is 1.4, and D-dimer is 84. So highlight in text the findings that are of immediate concern to the nurse. So just this little sliver of medical record that we have, I want you to highlight the findings that are of immediate concern to you as the nurse. All right, so right calf pain um, on assessment, the patient has mild swelling to the right lower leg, and then the D-dimer is 84. So the presence of calf pain, swelling to the leg, and an elevated D-dimer is concerning for a diagnosis of, that's right, a DVT. So also, while not of immediate concern, uh, you should recognize that the patient is both postpartum with a history of obesity, which puts her at a greater risk for DVT development. Um, you could also suspect a DVT if she was complaining of chest pain or shortness of breath as well. All right, this is a drop-down style question and will test your knowledge of physiological integrity. A 26-year-old male patient is brought into the emergency department by EMS after being in a motor vehicle accident. Upon physical assessment, the nurse notes the following. So there is rhythmic respirations with periods of apnea. The patient is unconscious. Uh, heart rate is 123. BP is 92 over 70. Respirations are anywhere from 10 to 14 breaths per minute. And the CO2 is 48. So based upon the knowledge that we have, the nurse recognizes that the patient is presenting 
um, with blank as evidenced by blank. So look at your options for one and decide based on the information you have, the patient is presenting with which of those and what is your evidence for that diagnosis. All right, so the nurse recognizes that the patient is presenting with Cheyenne-Stokes respirations as evidenced by the presence of rhythmic respirations with periods of apnea. So Cheyenne-Stokes respirations are characterized by rhythmic respirations with periods of apnea. The heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration rate will all vary depending on the periods of hyper and hypoventilation. However, the nurse would recognize that rhythmic respirations with periods of apnea are indicative of Cheyenne-Stokes respirations. So be able to recognize that as an assessment finding associated with the Cheyenne-Stokes respirations. All right, this is a multiple response select all that apply style question. It will test your knowledge of physiological integrity. A 69-year-old male patient with a history of persistent cough and abnormal chest imaging has just completed a bronchoscopy and biopsy for further evaluation. The nurse just came onto her shift and is now caring for the patient. Which of the following should the nurse report to the on-call physician immediately? Select all that apply. So which of these are of immediate concern in a patient who has just completed a bronchoscopy? All right, so those would be reports of chest tightness, tachycardia, and hypotension. Uh, so blood streak sputum can be expected for several hours following a bronchoscopy. Um, also, a dry cough can be expected as well. Uh, the patient needs to be assessed for possible complications, including that of a bronchospasm, which could be evidenced by reports of chest tightness, cyanosis, uh, dyspnea, hypotension, and tachycardia. All right, this is a highlight in text style question. It will test your knowledge of physiological integrity. A 42-year-old female patient presents to the outpatient imaging center for a scheduled CT scan of the brain with IV contrast for further evaluation of periods of increased lethargy associated with expressive aphasia and disorientation. The nurse is reviewing the patient's chart and notes the following. So hemoglobin is 14.5, creatinine 2.9, hematocrit 39%, her white count is 5.9, the patient has a past medical history of kidney disease, uh, cirrhosis of the liver, psoriasis with psoriatic arthritis, and chronic pain. She is currently prescribed oxycodone, gabapentin, and lactulose. So I want you to highlight the findings that are of immediate concern to the nurse. So in this small sliver of medical records um, that we have of this patient, highlight what is of immediate concern and jumps out to you as the nurse. All right, so what should be of immediate concern to you is that the creatinine is 2.9, and the patient has a past medical history of chronic kidney disease. Because if you look, she is going to have a CT of the brain with IV contrast. So anytime contrast dye is being used in a procedure, it's important for the nurse to ensure there's adequate renal function prior, um, prior to the procedure by assessing renal labs. So a creatinine of 2.9 is elevated, indicating that there is a current kidney injury and there's a need to avoid contrast dye. Um, also, you, you, whenever you use contrast dye, you always want to promote um, increased hydration post-procedure to be able to adequately flush the kidneys.